Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to find the zeros of functions as graphing aids, to determine the relative extrema, so those are like the relative maximum and minimum uh, of a function. So they might be the, the bumps or the peaks in a, in a function. And also to use the intermediate value theorem to help locate zeros of functions. Zeros of functions go by several names. Obviously zeros, solutions, x-intercepts, any of those will, will do. Given a function f and any real number a, the following are true about the zeros. We'll say x equals a is a zero of the function. X equals A could also be a solution of the function where f of x equals zero. So f of x here is our y equals zero. Okay, and that leads directly to the one that's two down here. That x minus A is a factor of the polynomial f of x. We'll use this quite a bit. And A comma zero is an x-intercept of the graph couple important things here in these last two bullet points. The function f equals x to the n has at most n real zeros. So that's an important thing to understand that a cubic or something to the fourth power has at most three zeros or four zeros. You can't have any more than that. And the graph of f has at most n minus 1 relative extrema, so a relative max or min. So these are the bumps on a graph. If you have something that's like x to the fifth, that means you could have as many as four bumps or relative max and min. So just remember the zeros are ordered pairs uh, that lie on the x-axis. Therefore, the y value of the ordered pair is zero. So frequently I'll ask for the zeros or the x-intercepts to be written as an ordered pair. Our process for finding the zeros, factoring. We're going to do quite a bit of factoring. Uh, you can use the square root method or completing the square of the quadratic formula, but that's only going to work for second degree polynomials. We'll show you how to use your graphing calculator to help you find the zeros. And at a later date, we'll explore how long division and synthetic division can help you find the zeros. So let's take a look at sample one. We want to find all the real zeros and relative extrema of this function, negative one fourth x to the fourth plus 3 halves x cubed minus 9 fourths x squared. So we know for sure our maximum z real zeros is 4. We also know that this will have 3 up to 3 bumps, okay, or 3 max and mins, relative max and mins. First thing we want to do with this one is factor out x squared. So we factor out x squared and right away we know we have a double root at x equals zero or we have two of our roots are at x equals zero. So now there's only two left. So as we say here, thus we know we have two repeated zeros at x equals zero. We call this multiplicity. And multiplicity is important. Uh, multiplicity says if we have an odd number of zeros, so if a zero is repeated one or three or even five times, etc., if we have an odd number of zeros, our graph is going to cross at that location. It's going to cross the x axis at that point. Whereas if our number of zeros is even, two, four, six, our, the graph of our function is going to bounce off of that point or off of that x-intercept. So we know that this graph is going to bounce off of, and this is going to go down, that particular point. 
because it's a double root. So this, some of you guys may see how to factor that one pretty easily, um, but I'm gonna go to the graphing calculator and I'm gonna graph this and see if I can find the zeros that way and also the relative extrema. So I pull up my graphing calculator and I've got my function already in there. I use decimals instead of uh, fractions and I'm gonna go ahead and graph that function. So I'm graphing the function in the standard window and just like we said we have a double root here at zero and it bounces and it appears we have another double root at three. So let's go find those zeros and we can find the zeros by going to the calc function, so second and then the trace key or second calc, we'll find the zeros. Uh, it's telling us where to search. We're not gonna search for the, the one at zero. So our left bound, and let's trace over to the other side of that zero. And our right bound, and it'll search in between there. Our zero occurs at essentially three, what it looked like. So our zeros are at, and that is a double root, so that's gonna be x equals three twice. Now to find the relative max and min, we don't need to search for the relative max. We know that the relative maxes here are at the zeros. So the only thing we need to find is the relative min. Again, I think we can go to the same thing, go to second and calc, and we wanna find the minimum value, three, and we need a left bound, so I need to get to the other side of our minimum here. Okay, it says up here we're calculating the minimum. Hit enter. We'll trace to the other side of it to create a right bound. Hit enter, hit enter again and we get a minimum, x is one and a half, 1.5, and our y is negative 1.27, we can call it for rounding purposes. Going back to our function, the zeros again, were at x equals zero, or the origin, and x is three, zero. So those are our zeros. This was also a relative max. And this one was a relative max. And then our relative min was at x was 1.5 and negative 1 point, I think it was 1 negative 1.27. Sample two is the, is the same question that we just did here. So I'm not gonna repeat that. Uh, I can tell you uh, that finding the zeros will be able to factor this. You won't need your calculator to do that. The cubic, so there will be three, as many as three real zeros. And we'll have two relative max or mins because we have one less. We have two bumps. So we're one less than the highest degree here. So I will leave that for you to do that and bring that to class. Sample three, find a polynomial function with zeros of negative one half, three, and three. So those are our zeros. So we get x equals negative one half, x equals three, and that's a double root. Working backwards, x equals three is really the factor x minus three. And x equals negative one half is the factor x plus one half. Now sometimes it can be a little cumbersome to work with fractions, so I'm gonna make x plus one half two x plus one. So these are our factors. Now x minus three is a double root, so we have two factors of x minus three. So our function, working backwards, since we know what our factors are from our x-intercepts, are two x plus one and 
x minus 3 squared. So we can FOIL all this together and we get 2x plus 1 and we know our pattern so that's x squared minus 6x plus 9. We'll have to do a little more FOILing there which I did in advance and that comes out to 2x cubed minus 11x squared plus 12x plus 9. So our function our final answer. And I forgot the x and 12x. There we go. Finally, the intermediate value theorem. The intermediate value theorem is a kind of a fancy way of saying that if we have a function and we know two of the points, we can narrow down that there has to be points in between. Okay, an intermediate value. So in this case, you know, we have an ordered pair that f of negative 2 equals negative 3, so we have a, a negative output, and we have an ordered pair on the top here at negative 1, 1. So that must mean that somewhere in between these two points, there is an x-intercept there must be some value for x that creates a zero for y. So we know that the, our x-intercept is going to fall somewhere between negative 1 and negative 2. So our zeros fall in between those two x-coordinates. So you may be asked to do problems such as this. Find three intervals of length 1 in which the polynomial is guaranteed to have a zero. We don't expect you to do this off the top of your head, so we'll input this into the graphing calculator, and let's take a look and see what we get. I'll deselect the first equation, I'll go back, I'll select the second equation, and we'll go ahead and graph that. So I graph that in the standard window, and I want to find that I've got zeros. I want to find out where they are. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. We'll get a little closer look at this. Um, so we can zoom, uh, zoom in. This will really give us a good idea of what we're looking at. Because we just need an interval of 1 to find out where those zeros are. So it appears we have zeros between negative 1 and 0 between 0 and 1, and between 1 and 2. So we can write that, our answer, between negative 1 and 0, 0 and 1, and 1 and 2. Three intervals of length 1 in which the polynomial is guaranteed to have a 0. So we know where our zeros are going to fall within those intervals. So, I think we've achieved our objectives of this particular video. We've found the zeros. Uh, we used our graphing calculator to help us out. We've introduced relative max and min and saw how the intermediate value theorem can help us locate zeros. And we'll get more practice with this when I see you in class.